Do you struggle to get your guitars to sound alive like this? I got a few tricks that can get you there. Hey guys, Joey here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a guitar track come to life with a combination of EQ, stereo widening, and reverb. A complaint that lots of people have with modern music is that it sounds too digital. And in our world of Kempers and amp sims, it can be easy to end up with a tone that sounds huge but feels sterile. Adding inconsistencies to the guitars is a cool way to give it more depth and add a little more dynamic information. Let's get right into how I'd approach this. EQing your left and right guitars differently is a really quick way to make your guitars feel more distinct and give them more personal character. Let's throw Pro Q on the guitar bus. If you don't have an EQ that you can treat each side differently, you can just use any EQ on the individual tracks. I just find it way easier to work on the bus, and you'll see why in a second. I'm going to start by making a boost on only the right channel. Then I'm gonna do a small cut at the same frequency on the left side. Now let's do a boost at a different frequency on the left side. Then we're gonna cut that same frequency on the right. Cool, this brings out a slightly different tonality on each of the guitars, which makes them stand out a little bit more. Since the EQ is on the guitar bus, I can see every move that I'm making in the same place. If I did this on individual tracks, I'd have to go back and forth between several different plugins to make sure that everything's lining up. Stereo wideners are a cool way to add a little character to your guitar track. Because they use phase to spread the tracks, we're gonna end up with some slightly different frequency content on the left and right sides. That difference will give the guitars more movement. I'm gonna use JST Sidewinder, but most stereo wideners will work the same way. I'm gonna mess with the settings until I hear the separation. Then I'm gonna back it off. Make sure you don't overdo it. This effect is supposed to be felt, not heard. Awesome, that helps break up the frequency content even more. Now, I'm gonna show you the real secret weapon to bringing your guitars to life. I know what you're thinking. Won't reverb totally ruin our rhythm tracks? Well, with some careful processing, we can add a ton of size and life without taking away the aggression of these tracks. The first thing we're gonna do is duplicate our rhythm tracks. If you've got a ton of complicated guitar tracks, you can do the same effect just using a send. All right, now load up a reverb on our duplicated tracks. Since this is a special effect, let's set the mix at 100%. We don't wanna smear our entire guitar mix, so we're gonna keep the decay pretty short. The next part is gonna depend on the song. I want a lot of presence from this guitar, so I'm gonna boost the tone knob, which affects the frequency curve of the reverb. Now that the reverb is dialed in, let's clean it up. I don't want a ton of low frequencies pushing the reverb, so I'm gonna put an EQ before the reverb. Let's start by just filtering out the low end.
Now we're going to do the same thing with the high frequencies to kill the fizz. Awesome. Now let's take it one step further. I'm going to reverse the pan on the reverb. And we'll zero out the fader and balance the guitar reverb with the guitar track. These guitars have a ton of width and sound super lively now. The reverb trick works great for bass too. Just duplicate your bass track. Dial in a reverb with a mix on full and a short decay. Filter out the extreme lows and highs. Throw on some stereo separation after the reverb Then just balance the bass reverb with the bass track and you're done. Let's listen back to our track and see how much life we added in. This brought these static metal tones to life. Keep this stuff in mind when you're going for a track that's supposed to sound like a band in a room. Inconsistencies and room sounds are what our ears expect to hear from live instruments. Just be careful not to wash out your tones with too much reverb or separation. Do you use any of these tricks in your mixes? If not, what are the methods that you use to make guitars sound more lively? Let me know in the comments below. That's all for this one. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. That's all for this one. Until next time, happy mixing.